Now, he goes about trying to do all these things, and in contrast, what did we say again and again? Mormon's going to put the light next to the darkness, the, the evil side by side with the good, because then it makes it easier to distinguish the two and see what's going on. So he's given you the bad side in chapter 46, those first ten verses. Now watch as he shifts to the good side. Captain Moroni, who is our type of Christ, it came to pass, verse 12, that he rent his coat and he took a piece thereof and he wrote upon it, in memory of our God, our religion, and freedom, and our peace, and our wives, and our children, and he fastened it upon the end of a pole, and he's going to call it the title of liberty. Now, look at this. On this title of liberty, this rent piece of cloak, this coat of his, he's going to write some things. Let me make it a little longer for our list. In memory of our God, our religion, our freedom, and by the way, pay close attention to the order and what relationship these elements that Captain Moroni is using, what they have relationship-wise to each other. In memory of our God, our religion, our freedom, our peace, our wives, and our children. So I'll make it a, a big cloak to fit it on. What do you notice? Hmm. If you put God first in your life, President Ezra Taft Benson said, then he will help you put everything else in its proper order, in its proper place in your life, and he said, and some things will fall out of your life altogether. Elder Maxwell said, if in the end you haven't put God in the first place, it really won't matter what you put in his place in the end. That first place belongs to God and nothing or no one else. Notice that if you have God in the right place, the very next thing you get is religion. Religion isn't the way the world talks about this, this organized religion and organizations that sometimes are filled with struggles and problems and bad behaviors of certain leaders at times in history. Religion at its root, at its core, is a significant word, Re to reconnect, it's to, to connect us or bind us to God. Let me put in there real quick. Um, other words that you know are ligament, right? Ligaments are what connect things. So religion is binding yourself into relationship with God and other people. It's not simply about rituals and a set of creeds, although those things matter. It's about the covenantal connections and the obligations. In fact, the word obligation, Obligate. I just realized, Lig. comes from the same word. The obligations we have to God and to others. That God wants you to reconnect with him, that's what the atonement of Jesus Christ is all about, is to provide the means whereby we can reconnect. So I put God first, he's going to give me a connecting point to him. With that connecting point comes true freedom. This is one of the biggest lies of the devil of all time, which is, wow, commandments and covenantal obligations, those are binding, those are, those are bringing you down into senseless and useless bondage. Be free! Use age. The devil would teach us the doctrine of consequence-free liberty. Liberty, do whatever you want with no consequences attached. That's his doctrine. God, knowing all things, says, if you truly want to be free, then I'm going to give you commandments, I'm going to give you the handbook for how to use agency appropriately on a covenant path that's bringing you closer and closer and closer to becoming more like me. That's freedom. That's agency. That's liberty. You could just as – Captain Murray could have just as easily labeled this, this whole flag that he made out of his coat. He could have titled it the title of agency or the title of freedom. He happened to call it the title of liberty. It's all the same thing. You want more freedom, 
Elder Christofferson said, learn as many of God's laws as you can and keep them. That's freedom, which flies in the face of the devil's doctrine today. Once you have freedom that comes through a connection with God, then and only then will you experience enduring joy and lasting peace, peace that only the Lord can give us through a, a life well lived. And notice then, now you get these family connections, wives and children. Brothers and sisters, look at that ordered list. I don't think for a minute that Captain Moroni ripped his coat in a moment of anger and said, huh, I gotta get these people riled up to fight, so what can, let me just come up with some random things that are worth fighting for. Okay, let's just write them down in a random order. I think he was very purposeful and quite frankly very inspired because to me, these are dominoes. If you turn your back on God, it's just a matter of time before you're going to lose any sense of religion. And once you've lost those two things, it's just a matter of time before you lose freedom. And once you've lost that, you will lose this, and eventually you're going to lose this and this. So, he holds this title of liberty up, and in verse 13 is where he gives it the title of the title of liberty, and all of these people come, they're believers in Christ. Keep in mind, we're at 73 BC, roughly. This is beautiful because you don't find this in the Old Testament, this, this BC Christianity like you do in the Book of Mormon. They're keeping the law of Moses, but boy, they are, they are laser-focused on the cause of Christ. And so now the people come running. Look at verse 21. Came to pass that when Moroni had proclaimed these words, behold, the people came running together with their armor girded about their loins, rending their garments in token or as a covenant that they would not forsake the Lord their God. Or in other words, if they should transgress the commandments of God or fall into transgression and be ashamed to take upon them the name of Christ, the Lord should rend them even as they had rent their garments. In antiquity, when you make a covenantal agreement, when you, when you promise to do something, there's always a token of that covenant to some degree or another. And so in antiquity, you'll often hear the phrase, cutting a covenant. Something has to be cut. And in this case, they come running up and they rip their clothes, their, you can picture this rending of their garment as they say, count me in. I'm with you, Moroni, and then they'll take their clothing in the next verse and they throw their garments down at the feet of Moroni. War is war's ugly. War is painful. It hurts. You can picture what it might be like after three weeks in the campaign, out sleeping in tents, going from place to place, and being you know, you're getting hit and injured and maybe wounds all over your body, and you wake up one morning and maybe the bread is moldy for breakfast, and you're thinking, life was so much easier back at home, I, I'm done, I'm leaving, and you go to put your shirt on and you pull it over, and what do you notice? This little rip, and you say, oh, yeah, I promised, I made a covenant and I can't break the covenant even though now it's really, really hard, and I don't know why it has to be so hard, but it is, but I'm not going back on my covenant. Brothers and sisters, God invites us into a covenantal relationship with him, and we cut those covenants in different ways symbolically. It's not a physical thing. It's a sign to our God to say, I'm taking this seriously, and I'm going to promise that I'm going to do this, and we make that promise because we know that down the road it's going to get really hard and we need to be reminded of the serious nature of that promise. And I love this little segment in here of where they're promising to do really hard things, not having any idea just how hard those things are going to be to fulfill and to stay faithful to the end.